This is my brother Gus and me, one of my favorite pictures, and I'm going to talk about my brother today, so I thought I would have a visual for you. I think it was about 10 and a half, 11 years ago, and I got a call from Gus, and then it turned into a conference call, I believe, and he wanted my brother Steve and my brother George and I to know that he had cancer and pancreatic cancer. There was going to be surgery, and so we traveled um, to Sycamore, where he was living, that's where I used to live, and we went to the hospital that he was at, and we waited for the results. And they said they got it all, so we were all happy about that. There was a birthday party we had for him where we got him well, just some little mementos. My brother George gave him a, a mitt and, a, and a, ball, a baseball that was signed. And it was a really good time, all of us being together at a restaurant. And then one day he called again and said that the cancer was back. And would I do him a favor? Would I tell George and Steve? And I said, sure, I'll tell them. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I said, sure. And so um, we were visiting Gus in a <clears throat> elderly home at that time because uh, he had fallen. And so his wife couldn't help him up if he um, had fallen. It was just really getting more difficult, so they had him in rehab. And Gus developed dementia. So he would forget why he was there, and there were times he would get angry because we didn't take him home, and he wanted to go home. That's all he kept saying is, I want to go home. And so we, each time we'd have to tell him that he had cancer again, and then he'd have to relive that. It was really hard. And then I remember one day when he finally said, um, I want to go home. Oh, I, I am home. And he got it. When he was still at his, at his um, apartment with Betty, I remember hospice was there. There was a hospice nurse, and she was in the room, and my phone dinged, and so I went in there and I said, did you want something? And he said, no, I didn't call you. And I said, yes, you did. I know you did. And he said, no, I didn't call you. And as I was leaving the room, I saw the, the nurse wink at me, so he was goofing around with me. And that was his humor, which was fine, which was fine. So I... I don't have a lot of memories before he died, but there was one in particular that was meaningful to me. <clears throat> I was visiting him in Sycamore, and then before I headed home to Peoria, I felt like a nudge to go back and see him before I took off. So I went back, and when I walked in, he was just laying there, and his food was on the tray, and. He hadn't touched it. So I said, D did you want some of your food? And he kind of nodded. And I said, um, I pointed to the meat, and he shook his head no. And I pointed to the dessert, and he <laughs> smiled. And so I fed my brother. And it's a meaningful time for me because it was like he was little again. And he was my older brother, but still, we were little. We were little like when we would, um, he would put Elvis Presley, uh, it would come up on the radio, my grandfather's ra large radio, and Gus would sing, I'm nothing but a hound dog, and, and he would just pretend to be like Elvis. And that, that's a good memory. Gus and I were not close. It seemed like he was mom's favorite and I was dad's favorite, so we were kind of pitted against each other. But I loved Gus. And I remember one Christmas when Gus got me this, if you can see it. 
There's the whole thing. It looks like a little dresser, and it's really a jewelry box. And now it, it sits on my daughter's dresser. She's got it. But it's very meaningful to me because I remember when he gave it to me and I thought, you're giving me a gift? I mean, <laughs> because we really weren't close as kids. And, and he wanted me to have it and he was so excited to give it to me. That was, a, oh, that was great. He would have his friend Larry come over and when, when they were kids and then they would make a big mess and expect me to clean it. That was our relationship. But, um, but I loved Gus. So I want to share this poem called Gus. Where did he go, this brother of mine, strong with his opinions, his voice, sometimes his presence? In his place is a mere shadow not even a good likeness. And yet, if I look deeply into weary eyes, I can see the one who shared my life for all my life. I take a deep breath wondering, how will I breathe when he stops? Um, it was hard, but God was there. And God helped all of us. Because remember I was telling you at a different segment that when somebody that you know and love dies, you're going to either have, you can have different feelings. If you had a close relationship, you're going to miss them. If you weren't close, you're going to wish that you had been close. There's just a whole bunch of feelings we go through. And when you know somebody's going to die, like in this case, Gus had cancer, and you know that they're going to die, they call that anticipatory grief, which I think is a bad name for it because usually when I think of anticipating something, it's something positive. But it's something you know is coming, and I've had to, to, I had to go through anticipatory grief a couple of different times in my life, but I remember it with Gus. Grief is a very long journey, a journey you take on your own. And no one can know all the sorrow you feel, for it is your sorrow alone. Grief is an awful intruder. It comes and it stays night and day. And no one can look at the way that you grieve and then tell you, no, this is the way. I think people mean well, but I think you hear things like, you need to move on. You need to get on with your life. It's been a while now, or variations of that. And the truth is, it takes as long as it takes. And as I said, if you had a good relationship or you had a troubled relationship, you're just gonna go through a whole bunch of different feelings. Some of you watching this are grieving a loved one now. And it's hard. And at times you feel raw. You just feel, you wonder if you're ever going to feel like you used to before. And yet, God has promised to be with us and comfort us, and He does. He really, really does. So if this is you and you are grieving somebody that you love, let me pray for you right now. Father God, I just lift up anyone who is grieving a loved one right now. I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit would comfort them. I pray that they would find people that are supportive around them. And I pray that you give them grace so that they can take it one day at a time. And we'll be sure to give you the praise and the glory. For we pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. If you're grieving, I'll keep praying for you. You can always leave me a comment. And also, I have something I'd like to ask you. 
as soon as that helicopter goes by, I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear it over here. I would like to ask that if you are not a subscriber to YouTube, that YouTube, you would look me up and that you would subscribe. And here's my reasons. I guess there's some sort of algorithm or something, and the more subscribers you get, the more eyes will be on your videos. If you know somebody that might be encouraged, then I ask you to share them. But even if you don't do that, thanks for watching. And for those of you that take the time to leave a comment, that really goes deeply into me. So thanks. Have a good day.